Hi, I want to talk to you about this statue here. Now, this statue is a Burmese dry lacquer statue, and the story with this is that a client of mine bought two of them. Uh, they're estimated to be a thousand years old, a pair of them. Um, Burmese dry lacquer statues, and they were delivered to his house. He just purchased a pair for, I believe it was around ten or twelve thousand uh, dollars, and this is going back. Uh, well, oh, maybe around uh, six, eight years ago, I did this restoration. And guess what? Um, the first one went into the house fine, and then the second one didn't make it. The truckers dropped it, and the, the statue broke into many pieces. Now, when this statue was dropped, uh, the base of it uh, broke mostly into uh, uh, plenty of uh, pieces over here. And uh, here's a box. Here's the crown that sits on top of the head. Now this is a cross section, and uh, this is a very interesting picture because the way that these statues were made was they used to first make uh, a figure out of clay, and then uh, around the, once they had the statue and the figure designed the way they want, um, they would wrap the the clay figure with uh, a lacquer from a tree. Now, the way this lacquer was made was they would take the resin from the melanoria tree and mix it up with particles like uh, sawdust, bamboo dust, um, animal dung, uh, things like that to make a composition and it would turn into this paste and they would wrap it around the clay statue in layers and then it will harden and get hard. Uh, so if we look at this cross section right over here. The uh, cool thing about it is you can see the first layer is a darker color and it had heavier particles in it. Uh, the second layer of the lacquer dust had more uniform consistent uh, medium type particles that were mixed in with it and then the last layer was even finer. Uh, it's actually a um, a clay that was wrapped on top of the lacquer wrapping and uh, the clay was the same kind of a clay that was used for gilding where you would see on gold leaf frames sometimes it would be red or, or gray or black it's the same kind of a clay uh, it has an animal glue mixed in with it to make it hard uh, except this was made finer so the outside could uh, be painted and also was gilt and uh, that's another reason why uh, they would put the finer pigment on the outside. They would sometimes add a color to it, uh, maybe a reddish color uh, on top of it, so that on top of that they would put the gold leaf on it. After the core of the statue was made with these wrappings, they would remove the clay from underneath it and pull the clay out. This would allow the outside to be a, a hollow uh, casted type statue. The size of this, I have my fender base leaning against the statue, so it's approximately four feet tall and about a hundred pounds. So uh, because the base had broken in so many pieces, it's just imperative to make sure that everything glues up nice and square and together so that when we go to assemble this, it all fits together. This is the first uh, part of the clamping. I took half of the base unit and uh, used clamps to clamp and glue it level into position. Uh, here the clamping's a little bit more. I use a masking tape to hold it into position, but I uh, kind of wear off the glue a little bit before I use it. I want to make sure it doesn't pull off any pigment. So this one half is glued together of the base. This is the second half over here that's glued together. And uh, finally, the base is put together. Here's the base here. A little bit different sections glued into shape. So uh, you want to make sure you clamp everything level so that um, it lines up with the top when you finally put the top together. One thing to keep in mind about this statue is its weight. Uh, it's uh, over about 100 pounds and um, we're gluing the base all together in all these pieces and when the top goes to connect to the base 
it better line up pretty well. So that's why it's so important for this to be uh, repaired nice and squarely. Each piece back as tight as possible. Now, um, there are some parts where it broke. There's pieces uh, missing where it just pulverized. I have a, a kind of a little secret weapon that I use, and uh, it's a good way to connect some of the uh, possible type of uh, things you're working on, harder things. You just take some very fine steel wool. This is some that I've been using. And um, here's a piece of wood. It's got a crack in it. And um, I'm just going to push this into here to now to kind of show you where we're going with it. And um, I can use it to fill spots or to hold things together. Now I take my little secret mixture and I wet the steel wool with it and I have an activator that makes this uh, get hard the solution and you spray it on and it creates a little chemical reaction gets very very hot this is pretty dangerous stuff you do not, do not want it to touch your fingers or else it's going to burn stick to your skin and burn you but uh, it gets very, very hard. It gets hard as uh, gets hard as rock. And uh, just to show you how hard this is right now, it's in there pretty good, and uh, it, it holds things together. Now there's a lot of spots in binding the statue together that I use this process. I'll point out a few for them right here. Now when the statue is glued together, the base is actually clamped and braced so that it doesn't expand out or push out when the weight of the top is put on it. I want to make sure it sits absolutely still. And now the statue is attached and it's being clamped downwards so it's being pushed into the base cavity. Now we lay the statue on its back because along the front edge, there's this one gap that doesn't line up absolutely flat. So we see these arrows here, this line that goes between the arrows, that area there uh, moves. So I built this little, these clamps, built these little bridges with the boards pressing on that line there to press it down flat. And then I use my steel wool mixture to seal it up and uh, activate it and hold it into place. All the gaps now around the statue that are open have all now been filled with my steel wool mixture. And you don't have to use your steel wool mixture. At this point, you can use a regular uh, gesso putty mix with uh, some uh, particles or fibers mixed into it, whatever you need. And now um, all the voids that were there are now mixed with a matching clay that I made so that when it dries, the color matches the clay that is used on the statue. After that, it will be uh, touched up with pigments.